Good afternoon. I am Dr. Vinayak Dasurkar. At the outset, I would like to thank IACTA TE organizers for nominating me for the particular talk on the role of ECHO in meaning from bypass or meaning from ECMO. All of us are doing on pump off pump surgery every day and using ECHO during the process. Day by day, use of TE is going up and adding to better decision making from surgical corrections or weaning from bypass. The things which we cannot see from external appearance of the heart can be well seen by using echo and especially the flow alterations can be determined more correctly by using echo. So what we are going to look at the outline of the talk is weaning from bypass and then weaning from ECMO. They're two separate components of the talk. Weaning from bypass is a day-to-day -day affair for us and we all know that routine things like temperature, rhythm, respiration, potassium corrections are the key components as usual. And the role of ECMO can be different depending on the case. So the cases can be low ejection fraction, ischemic heart disease, it can be off pump surgery or can be on pump surgery with a poor LV, valvular surgery, valvular repairs and replacements. And in those cases, we need to look at different things with echo. So predominantly what we look at is air in the heart, a region of almost abnormalities. What happened with the old ones? Are there any new ones? Filling of the heart, assessment of filling of the heart, especially with thick LV, valvular function, the morphology after replacement. So we'll look at one after the other. Here is an example of regional wall motion post CPB off pump surgery. Actually, this wall motion abnormality occurred just after shifting into the recovery. There was new ECG changes that appeared on the screen. So immediately a TE probe was put in since the patient was intubated. And you can see there is no ECG and you can see there is a lateral wall, wall motion abnormality, no movement at all. Because there was end artectomy done in the area of the vessel, it was decided to give heparin immediately and see what happens. The ECG changes disappeared. The LV contractility also got better, wall motion abnormalities disappeared and the patient was all right. The patient had to be re-explored because of some different reason afterwards. Air in the heart is another a very difficult thing to sort out, especially when there are big chambers like a large LA or a large LV. So large LA can be after mitral stenotic procedures or mitral regurgitation uh, process. Similar thing is true with the large LV of the aortic regurgitation. So what happens is this air gets stuck into the LV cavity because the filling of the heart is not uniform and use of CO2 I would highly encourage in this situation, especially the case which I faced last month. It was a straightforward mitral valve replacement. And we came off with a very minimal support and the patient was in air before, but after procedure there was bradycardia. So we started pacing the patient. <coughs> and things improved, we had a sinus rhythm and the chest was closed. Before closing, we have ensured that there is no air in the LA and there was a thin band along the left atrium side of the interatrial septum. But since nothing was coming into the aorta, we decided to um, wean and come off. 
The process went on very well. We shifted the patient to recovery, and within three minutes, there was bradycardia followed by pulse as electrical activity. We had no other option but to start the massage and shift the patient back to theater. The patient was re explored, put on bypass. The heart started beating on its own as soon as we put on the bypass. And while their function was excellent, we had to wait for two hours, though, because there was a significant amount of CPR we had given, and the heart took a long time to recover. But by day six, the patient was back onto the ward. Here is another case of post valvular surgery, what happens. So post AVR or in this particular scenario, this post AVR LED territory problem. So usually the coronary artery are handled in this process of aortic valve procedures. Same thing is true about post dissection repairs because in those cases you don't do any uh, these are emergency procedures, so you don't have any angiography done. So you have to rely on the left ventricular short axis view to assess that there is no coronary problems. But when you do the ventral procedure, there can be an issue you can see in this particular view, and then you have to do the graft. In this particular case, a uh, venous graft was put on LED, and the things improved as soon as the uh, Graft was put in. So there are a few things when you look after when there are wall surgeries. So post wall surgeries, if you might tell wall and aortic wall, you have to see certain things. So here is an example of query paravalvular leak stuck leaflet after posterior wall implementation. So if you see here, the main problem over here is there is no ECG, so you can't time the regurgitation things over here. Secondly, there is a leaflet movement seen here and this leaflet is intermittently moving. Because there is no ECG, you cannot time this particular and in this particular view, it is very difficult to say whether it's a paravalvular leak or not. So different views and ECG is essential in diagnosing this particular thing because these are very uh, focused decisions. Surgeon has to go in again, you have to go on bypass, the surgical time goes on. So, what people have done is post valve surgery, say, especially mitral valve surgery, you should check residual regurgitation, stenosis, pressure gradients, paravalvular leaks, very important. So a small paravalvary can disappear after putting administration. SAM, left circumflex territory, and new aortic valleys, if you can find, they should be addressed. And finally, RV function after a mitral procedure. There was a nice, there is a nice paper, focus topic paper in the Journal of American Surgery, Echocardiography. It's describes everything about perioperative echocardiographic guidelines and standards. For aortic valve, you have to check again the same thing in regurgitation, the gradients, paravalvary, you can see patient prosthetic mismatch if you have to put a smaller valve. You have to, don't forget about ascending aorta and anterior mitral leaflet. So here is an examples of aortic valve injury with mitral surgery, the pre Procedure, you can see a trivial AR central jet, a small jet. In the post procedure mitral replacement, you can see there is probably a puncture in the NCC or there is a, there is a new flow, regurgitation occurring through NCC. The, the surgeon had to go on bypass and repair it again. So there are certain things that you should assess in LV filling, especially the concentric LVH cases in case of aortic stenosis, because it can be difficult to judge the filling of the heart. So you should use IVC, right ventricular size, to judge the exact filling of the heart. 
Externally, you can see whether the RV is full or not. You can, the surgeon can feel the pulmonary artery and tell us the feeling is okay or not. But as a person who can look through the heart, you should be able to judge with a good feeling with uh, use of echo. So from here, we move on to the topic of echo in weaning from ECMO. And we all know that there are two echoes, ECMOs, VV ECMO and VA ECMO. VV ECMO doesn't need echo to wean, but things are coming up for that as well nowadays. We will restrict our talk today to VA ECMO. And weaning from VBA ECMO is a bit of a complex decision process. Usually the cardiac recovery is marked by increasing pulsatile flow seen on the arterial trace. That's what we, when we think that oh, the heart is improving. So you go on reducing the ECMO flow to say one to 1.5 liters and start assessing the various parameters. This is being done generally for many years. And most of the studies that were done were based on the left ventricular assist device cases. So how to wean from LVAD, that was the basis for this particular state-of-the-art review article in the Journal of American Surgical Echocardiography. Though there is a very less information about weaning, but it mentions that for VA ECMO, it is unusual to attempt to wean in first 72 hours. This is not even 2012. But after 2009, there is a lot of increase in ECPRs. So this is not true. There are no specific echocardiography protocol developed for ECMO weaning. This still holds a bit true. Approach similar to weaning from LVAD may be used for ECMO. That's what they decided from the study done from 1999, 2008, and so on. The echo parameters they suggested where attempt to seize ECMO or LVEF more than 35 to 40 percent, LVOT, VTI more than 10 centimeters, absence of LV dilatation, and no cardiac tamponade. Now, looking at that, immediately in the next few months, there was an editorial in the same journal regarding the evolving role of quantitative echocardiography in management of patients. So, the quantitative echocardiography started coming up. And the, uh, what the article that triggered was two dimensional strain rate and Doppler tissue myocardial velocities were used to judge the improvement, functional improvement of the failure ventricle. So now here you are going from load dependent parameters to load independent parameters to assess the recovery. Though the basis of that paper was again a study in 2008 and one before that. Left ventricular dimensions predicting successful myocardial recovery in non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. The under the uh, uh, paper in that was a debutamine stress echo. This is from 2003 that they are using debutamine stress echo to predict the myocardial improvement in patients supported by left ventricular ICD device, especially those who have a long-term ECMO. So with all that in picture, as the echo technology progressed, three-dimensional echocardiography derived right ventricular ejection fraction was considered. And in this particular paper in 2018, they have shown that they use the right ventricular ejection fraction number more than 24.6%, which was associated with higher weaning success and lower 30 days mortality after first intent of decannulation. And what they did was a simple thing. They reduced the flow, kept it for five minutes. They did 3D RV study, which is quite challenging job. And the patient needs to be in left lateral position. So the cannulas are still there. The ECMO team is still there to support. And if everything is favorable, you expand the cannulas. 2015, there was a person who suggested why we should do the weaning study from ECMO to assess the recovery need to recognize and identify RV impairment an important factor. 
and to plan for the treatment, so antiplasis device or transplant, or if it is improving heart, inotropic support like levosimendum. The prognostication of withdrawal of therapy and including withdrawal of therapy is also important. So what he suggested is how to do this study can be done with TE or TTE. Why TTE? Because patients with coagulation issues may not be able to tolerate TE. It involves a reduction in ECMO flows as we have seen in the stepwise manner. Wait for five to 10 minutes to assess. Assessment can be qualitative, the eyeballing of RV and function. If the patient is awake, you assess what is happening with it. Quantitative assessment was about invasive hemodynamic monitor for parameters and most importantly, the echo features of LVOT, AVVTI, LVEF, dimensional uh, in two, uh, two chamber view, RV systolic function using TAPSE or tissue Doppler and RVS dash, LVRV size and lateral mitral annulus peak systolic velocities and also look at significant valvular regurgitation. So how to do this? This is one way. We D, this is not the correct view. Two chamber, you should look in four chamber because you can see the RV as well. If TT is done, you can use a contrast study so that you can better delineate the LV size and assess it very well. This, the next one is the LVOT VTI at load flows. There is a little bit of a support dobutamin stress is being done for here and the heart is able to generate a good VTI. So the natural history of underlying disease has to be factored in when you are weaning from an ECMO. And as the time progressed, they came out with a reduced LV ejection fraction number more than 20, 25% is good enough to wean because you can support the heart with inotropes or other cases for a while. And TAPC of 12. The important aspect is patience and systemic approach during the weaning and observing the ability of heart to compensate throughout the process. Anything happened in 2021? Yes, there is a paper where they have looked at some different parameters. And this paper says that new criteria are improvement in tracker speed S wave more than 10% and any improvement in lateral E. These two can be better to determine. So what they have done is they have looked at a big data, but they took only a part of it, say 94 patients. And that's what, so it's a bit of a biased study, but they accepted that. And what they looked at is the RV, FH fraction area change, TAPSA, TDI, tricuspid S in four, four chamber view. And they, they are saying that improvement of lateral e velocity and tricuspid annual S velocity flow may be better to uh, tell us about cardiac reserve from recording heart. Now, there was immediately response to this saying that more than 50% of the patients in this study are ECPR, those who were selected, say 90, out of 94, 50% are ECPR. So the need and duration of ECMO support is less. And usually in ischemic cases, when the heart improves, you don't need ECMO. So that may not be applicable to conventional long-term VA ECMO. So jury is still open. And with that, I will stop. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you.